My father uh, gave me a very small loan in 1975, and I built it into a company that's worth many, many billions of dollars with some of the greatest assets in the world. And I say that only because that's the kind of thinking that our country needs. Our country's in deep trouble. We don't know what we're doing when it comes to devaluations and all of these countries all over the world, especially China. They're the, the best, the best ever at it. What they're doing to us is a very, very sad thing. So we have to do that. We have to renegotiate our trade deals. And Lester, they're taking our jobs, they're giving incentives, they're doing things that, frankly, we don't do. Uh, let me give you the example of Mexico. They have a VAT tax. We're in a different system. When we sell into Mexico, there's a tax. When they sell in automatic, 16 percent approximately. When they sell into us, there's no tax. It's a defective agreement. It's been defective for a long time, many years, but the politicians haven't done anything about it. But in all fairness to Secretary Clinton, when she started talking about this, it was really very recently. She's been doing this for 30 years. And why hasn't she made the agreements better? The NAFTA agreement is defective just because of the tax and many other reasons, but just because of the fact. Let me interrupt you a moment. But Secretary Clinton and others, politicians, should have been doing this for years. Not right now because of the fact that we've created a movement. They should have been doing this for years. What's happened to our jobs and our country and our economy generally is, look, we owe $20 trillion. We cannot do it any longer. We have to stop our jobs from being stolen from us. We have to stop our companies from leaving. Our jobs are fleeing the country. They're going to Mexico. They're going to many other countries. You look at what China is doing to our country in terms of making our product. They're devaluing their currency, and there's nobody in our government to fight them. And we have a very good fight, and we have a winning fight because they're using our country as a piggy bank to rebuild China, and many other countries are doing the same thing. So we're losing our good jobs, so many of them. When you look at what's happening in Mexico, a friend of mine who builds plants said it's the eighth wonder of the world. They're building some of the biggest plants anywhere in the world, some of the most sophisticated, some of the best plants. With the United States, as he said, not so much. So Ford is leaving, thousands of jobs, leaving Michigan, leaving Ohio. They're all leaving, and we can't allow it to happen anymore. How do you bring back, specifically bring back jobs, American manufacturers? How do you make them bring the jobs back? Well, the first thing you do is don't let the jobs leave. The companies are leaving. I could name, I mean, there are thousands of them. They're leaving, and they're leaving in bigger numbers than ever. And what you do is you say, fine, you want to go to Mexico or some other country, good luck. We wish you a lot of luck. But if you think you're going to make your air conditioners or your cars or your cookies or whatever you make and bring them into our country without a tax, you're wrong. And once you say you're going to have to tax them coming in, and our politicians never do this because they have special interests and the special interests want those companies to leave because in many cases they own the companies. So what I'm saying is we can stop them from leaving. We have to stop them from leaving. And that's a big, big factor. I'm a great believer in all forms of energy, but we're putting a lot of people out of work. Our energy policies are a disaster. Our country is losing so much in terms of energy, in terms of paying off our debt. You can't do what you're looking to do with 20 trillion in debt. The Obama administration, from the time they've come in, is over 230 years worth of debt, and he's topped it. He's doubled it in a course of almost eight years, seven and a half years to be semi-exact. So I will tell you this, uh, we have to do a much better job at keeping our jobs, and we have to do a much better job at giving companies incentive to build new companies or to expand, because they're not doing it. And all you have to do is look at Michigan, and look at Ohio, and look at all of these places where so many of their of their jobs and their companies are just leaving. They're gone. And Hillary, I just ask you this. You've been doing this for 30 years. Why are you just thinking about these solutions right now? For 30 years, you've been doing it. And now you're just starting to think of solutions. Well, actually, I will bring, excuse me, I will bring back jobs. You can't bring back jobs. Well, actually, 
Um, I have thought about this quite a bit. Yeah, for 30 and years. I've your husband signed NAFTA, which was one of the worst things that ever happened well, to the that's manufacturing your industry. That is your you go to New England, you go to Ohio, Pennsylvania, you go anywhere you want, Secretary Clinton, and you will see devastation where manufacturing is down 30, 40, sometimes 50 percent. NAFTA is the worst trade deal maybe ever signed anywhere, but certainly ever signed in this country. And now you want to approve Trans-Pacific Partnership. You were totally in favor of it. Then you heard what I was saying, how bad it is, and you said, I can't win that debate. But you know that if you did win, you would approve that, and that will be almost as bad as NAFTA. Nothing will ever well, top NAFTA. You are going to approve one of the biggest tax increases in history. You are going to drive business out. Your regulations are a disaster, and you're going to increase regulations all over the place. And by the way, my tax cut is the biggest since Ronald Reagan. I'm very proud of it. It will create tremendous numbers of new jobs. But regulations, you are going to regulate these businesses out of existence. When I go around, Lester, I tell you this, I've been all over. And when I go around, despite the tax cut, the, thing, the things that business as and people like the most is the fact that I'm cutting regulation. You have regulations on top of regulations and new companies cannot form and old companies are going out of business and you want to increase the regulations and make them even worse. I'm going to cut regulations, but I'm going to cut taxes, big league, and you're going to raise taxes, big league. End of story. I'm going to give you go to her website right here. and you take a look at her segment. website. She's yes, going to raise taxes, $1.3 trillion, typical politician, all talk, no action, sounds good, doesn't work, never going to happen. Our country is suffering because people like Secretary Clinton have made such bad decisions in terms of our jobs and in terms of what's going on. Now, look, we have the worst revival of an economy since the Great Depression. And believe me, we're in a bubble right now. And the only thing that looks good is the stock market. But if you raise interest rates even a little bit, that's going to come crashing down. We are in a big, fat, ugly bubble. And we better be awfully careful. And we have a Fed that's doing political things. This Janet Yellen of the Fed. The Fed is doing political by keeping the interest rates at this level. And believe me, the day Obama goes off and he leaves and he goes out to the golf course for the rest of his life to play golf, when they raise interest rates, you're going to see some very bad things happen because the Fed is not doing their job. The Fed is being more political than Secretary Clinton. The African-American community has been let down by our politicians. They talk good around election time, like right now. And after the election, they said, see you later. I'll see you in four years. The African-American community, look, the community within the inner cities has been so badly treated. They've been abused and used in order to get votes by Democrat politicians, because that's what it is. They've controlled these communities right. for up to 100 years. Mr. Trump, let me well, unbroken. I, I, I and, and I will tell you, you look at the inner cities and I just left Detroit and I just left Philadelphia and I just you know, you've seen me. I've been all over the place. Uh, you decided to stay home and that's OK. But I will tell you, I've been all over and I've met some of the greatest people I'll ever meet within these communities, and they are very, very upset with what their politicians have told them and what their politicians have done. Well, first of all, Secretary Clinton doesn't want to use a couple of words, and that's law and order. And we need law and order. If we don't have it, we're not going to have a country. And when I look at what's going on in Charlotte, a city I love, a city where I have investments, when I look at what's going on throughout various parts of our country, whether it's, I mean, I can just keep naming them all day long. We need law and order in our country. We have a situation where we have uh, our inner cities, African-Americans, Hispanics, are living in hell because it's so dangerous. You walk down the street, you get shot. In Chicago, they've had thousands of shootings, thousands since January 1st, thousands of shootings. And I'm saying, where is this? Is this a war-torn country? What are we doing? 
And we have to stop the violence. We have to bring back law and order in a place like Chicago, where thousands of people have been killed, thousands over the last number of years. In fact, almost 4,000 have been killed since Barack Obama became president. Over four, almost 4,000 people in Chicago have been killed. We have to bring back law and order. I do want to bring up the fact that you were the one that brought up the word super predator about young black youth. And that's a term that I think was a, uh, it's, hor it's been horribly met, as you know. I think you've apologized for it. But uh, I think it was a terrible thing to say. I will say this. Uh, we have a situation in this country that has to be taken care of. I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes when she releases her 33,000 emails that have been deleted. As soon as she releases them, I will release, I will release my tax returns. I made a mistake using a private email. That's for sure. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I would obviously do it differently. Um, but I'm not going to make any excuses. It was a mistake, and I take responsibility for that. Mr. Trump? That was more than a mistake. That was done purposely, okay? That was not a mistake. That was done purposely. When you have your staff taking the Fifth Amendment, taking the Fifth so they're not prosecuted, when you have the man that set up the illegal server taking the Fifth, I think it's disgraceful. And believe me, this country thinks it's disgraceful. It really thinks it's disgraceful also. I'm getting rid of the carried interest provision. And if you really look, it's not a tax. It's really not a great thing for the wealthy. It's a great thing for the middle class. It's a great thing for companies to expand. And when these people are going to put billions and billions of dollars into companies, and when they're going to bring two and a half trillion dollars back from overseas, where they can't bring the money back because politicians like Secretary Clinton won't allow them to bring the money back because the taxes are so onerous and the bureaucratic red tape so what is so bad so what they're doing is they're leaving our country and they're believe it or not leaving because taxes are too high and because some of them have lots of money outside of our country and instead of bringing it back and putting the money to work because they can't work out a deal to and everybody agrees it should be brought back. Instead of that, they're leaving our country to get their money because they can't bring their money back into our country because of bureaucratic red tape, because they can't get together. Because we, we have a president that can't sit them around a table and get them to approve something. And here's the thing. Republicans and Democrats agree that this should be done. Two and a half trillion. I happen to think it's double that. It's probably five trillion dollars that we can't bring into our country, Lester. And with a little leadership, you'd get it in here very quickly. And it could be put to use on the inner cities and lots of other things. And it would be beautiful. But we have no leadership. 